Hey guys, Steelboy925 here and welcome back to a new episode of my Minecraft tutorial series. Uh, in the last episode we found ourselves some diamonds while we were exploring a mineshaft. So I made a diamond pickaxe and we got three diamonds left. So today we're going to go on a little adventure, try to find some sugar cane so that we can make a uh, enchanting table and get some of our gear enchanted. So the first thing we're going to have to do is uh, I do want to plant these melons that we found in the mineshaft. So I'm going to grab those real quick. And I'm going to put my armor on so we can go looking for some sugar cane. Uh, now right above this hill, before we go on our adventure, uh, we have these pumpkins here. I'm going to chop these down so we can plant these as well. So I just picked up these two pumpkins. I'm going to place them in the crafting area to turn those into pumpkin seeds. So now we got pumpkin seeds and melon seeds. And uh, you know what? I'm going to go back into... Uh, our shelter over here and I'm gonna see if we have any bone meal to kind of speed up the growth of these so we got a couple bones and some bone meal alright let me head over to the farming area and show you guys what I made okay so I made this little section here ahead of time so we can plant our uh, melons and our pumpkins now we got these seeds here and what we're gonna do is uh, plant them on this uh, tilled soil that's already hydrated uh, before I do that I think I'm gonna do the same trick I did over over there with the uh, where I covered the water troughs with slabs. I'm gonna do the same thing here just to make it look a little nicer. So I'm gonna run some slabs down here and remember of course that even though this looks like there's no water there, if you break the slab it's there's still water. So those are all water uh, waterlogged slabs. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Just cover these with slabs just to make it look nicer. Uh, it looks like I need one more. So I'm gonna run over to my crafting table Make a couple more slabs. I'm going to fill this one in here. And now I'm going to take my seeds and I'm going to plant melons right here. And I'm going to plant pumpkins on this side. So I'm going to run those all the way down. And then I need a couple more melon seeds. So what I'm going to do is take my bone meal and bone meal these uh, melon plants here all the way to the top. And then I'm going to break them. And I should get a couple extra seeds. So now I got three. And I'm going to do the same thing again until I can fill this area up. So I finished planting the melons on the right here. And I planted all the pumpkins on the left. And I ran out of bone meal so these plants aren't grown all the way up. But once they get to this height here, there's a small chance that they're going to grow either a melon or a pumpkin. Depending on the type of plant they are. And when that happens, there's going to be a melon that grows on this block here that's connected to the plant and then what you do is you harvest up the melon and the plant stays behind and uh, after we go find our sugar cane we'll come back and check on this so I can show you guys uh, but what I need now is that sugar cane that I was talking about so I'm gonna go exploring a little bit and what I'm looking for is uh, either rivers or oceans or even little uh, little ponds like this uh, because that's where the sugar cane grows it has to grow directly next to a water source and so that's the place to look either along a river or along the uh, shore of the ocean or next to these little ponds here uh, so I'm just gonna go for a little walk and then I'll check in once I find some so actually here's a looks like there's a big ocean over here and I should be able to find some in this area and there is what I'm looking for that's the sugar cane so I'm just gonna jump across this river real quick uh, this is the sugar cane here, and it has to grow directly next to a water source. So if I chop these down, let me put those on my hot bar. You see, I can plant them here. I can also plant them on sand, and you can plant them on dirt. But if I try to plant them away from the water, it, it won't work. See, so I can't plant it here. It has to be directly next to a water source. So let me go look for a few more, and then we're going to walk back to our uh, our farming area. Here's a few more, and I saw some more in, on the other side of these trees here. There's a couple more. So I've been walking along the shore here looking for more sugar cane, and I found this shipwreck. Now there's treasures inside of these, so let's explore this thing together. Uh, let's see if there's an easy way in. It's actually on its side. Let's see what's in here. Looks like we got a some sand in here inside the uh, 
what would this be like the captain's quarters and there's a treasure chest so let me get rid of this sand uh, it looks like we found some carrots which we already have a uh, leather helmet that's enchanted with protection 3 so that's why this is glowing purple here it's, it's uh, enchanted and that's what we want our enchanting table for that's why we're out here looking for sugarcane oh there's a piece of bamboo in here this is actually uh, super useful I'm gonna grab that um, we actually want the sugar cane to make paper, so I'm going to grab this paper as well. Uh, I got some coal and this suspicious stew. Uh, I think there's one more chest in here somewhere. Let me see if I can find it and then I'll get back to you. So it's right down here under the water. Let me open it up. Oh, it looks like we got some books, uh, a buried treasure map. So I'll leave the dirt behind and feathers. These are also good. So now that we got our pumpkins and our melons growing, I can leave that behind gotta be careful I don't drown and let me work my way back out of here all right so we found uh, let's see we got uh, 22 pieces of sugar cane I found this uh, bamboo which is gonna come in really handy uh, let's take a look at this treasure map so uh, you see the uh, white dot in the upper left hand corner of the map uh, that's our current position and the red X should be a treasure uh, I don't think I'm going to go looking for it now. Maybe we'll come back and look for it. Uh, so I'm just going to hold on to that for now. Uh, let's make our way back to uh, where we were doing all our farming, which is in that direction. Now, instead of walking, I'm going to make a boat. So I'm going to make a crafting table real quick. Set this down. And then I'm going to take some spruce planks. You can use any kind of planks. And I'm going to place them just like this. And that'll give me a boat. So this one's a spruce boat because I use the spruce planks. And uh, you can use the other types of woods to make a, a boat in that wood type. So you just right click to get in. And then you use your WASD keys to, to row. There's a little fish in the water. So I'm just going to boat across here. Uh, over in that direction is where we have our plants. Once I get over there, I'll... Uh, oh look, we got a dolphin in the ocean here. I'm going to get back to where all of our... Uh, where we kind of settled down and I'll check in with you guys so just to elaborate a little bit more on this map here you see the dot is now over on the right hand side of the map uh, so this map is always facing north if I wanted to make my way over to that X I want to head pretty much directly south now if I start walking forward here you see that the dot is uh, slowly, mo slowly moving down as you get closer to that treasure the uh, dot will actually head into the map uh, now right now I'm facing if I hit F3 and you look at the uh, left side of the screen a little bit below the coordinates there's a line that says facing south uh, now looking at our map I would want to go pretty much directly west which would be over in that direction so that's how you would orientate yourself so that you're heading in the correct direction to find your treasure now the suspicious stew that I found will give you an unknown effect for a very short period of time so there's actually no way of knowing what you're gonna get until you drink it so let me right click to drink this suspicious stew here and see what happens Oh, looks like I gotta be hungry first. Okay, now that I'm hungry, I'll try to eat this and see what happens. And it looks like we got jump boost. So if I jump, I could actually jump over a fence right now. Oh no, it's gonna run out. Oh, I ran out. The feathers that we found are useful if we have some flint, which you see on the floor right there. And you get flint from uh, digging up gravel. Every time you break a gravel block, there's gonna be a small chance that it'll drop some flint, just like it did there. So let me collect a little bit more flint and show you what you can do with the feathers. So I found my feathers in a uh, chest in that shipwreck, but you can also get them from killing your chickens. So whenever you kill your chickens, you'll get uh, the raw chicken, which you can cook and eat. But you also get these feathers. And what we're going to do with these is place them on the bottom of our crafting area here. Uh, take some sticks and put them in the center. And then place our flint on the top as our arrowhead. And that'll make us uh, four arrows. So one of each of these will give you four arrows. Let me collect all of these, and now we got a, quite a bit, few more arrows to um, to use with our bow. Oh man, I'm getting attacked and I don't have a shield. Oh no, I gotta retreat. Alright, one more. Got him. 
Now one thing about those Illager patrols is if you get one that has a banner on its head, and that was this banner here which had actually dropped when I killed it, uh, you're going to get this bad omen effect and what that does is when you go into a village it's going to trigger a raid so a bunch of those will start spawning in, in uh, waves and they'll come attack you. Now if you want to get rid of a potion effect it doesn't have to be this one but any effect what you can do is you take your uh, your bucket and right click on a cow and that'll milk it so now I have a bucket of milk and if you drink a bucket of milk it will get rid of any effects that you have so if I right click to drink this you see that on the right that uh, the icon disappeared and now I don't have any effect I decided I'm gonna plant my sugar cane over here by where my original wheat farm was uh, now I got all my other farming stuff over there but wanted kind of a big flat area to do this and the way I'm gonna do it is I made these water troughs uh, two blocks apart here so that this water trough can water sugar cane on that side and on this side and then this water trough here will water a sugar cane on this side and on this side. So now I can have rows of two here and then only one on the outside. So I'll plant another one there, another one here. And then I'm going to just run these all the way down. I'm going to let those grow and then I'll uh, harvest them and replant until I fill this entire area. And then of course these water troughs, I don't want to be falling into them. So just like I did over there, I'm going to take some slabs and cover these up just like that. Now the bamboo that I found does not need any water source, so I can plant this anywhere on a grass or dirt block. So I'm just going to right click just right here for now, and I'm going to let that grow as well. So some of our melons are finally grown. Uh, we don't have any pumpkins yet, but we do have some melons. And again, in order to harvest these, all you do is you uh, chop down the watermelons. And in this case, they turn into melon slices. And of course it leaves the plant behind. So now, oh, there goes another one there. So that, that's how they grow right there. And the pumpkins will do the same thing. All right, so I let this stuff here grow for a little bit. Now the sugar cane will only grow three tall. The bamboo will grow super tall, like 15 or 20 blocks or something. But what I'm gonna do now is only chop these down at the second uh, sugar cane. So I'll click on this and the top two break off. And I'm going to leave the bottom one behind so that that can uh, grow again up to three and then I can uh, you know, rinse and repeat, do the same thing. So now I'm going to take all this sugar cane I just got and keep planting these until I fill up my little area here. And I'll do the same thing with my bamboo here. So I'll click on the bottom to knock it all down. And then I'm going to pick these up and replant them. So you can see with these fully grown melons and pumpkins here that uh, the one on the edge, wherever you plant this uh, little plant, the pumpkin or the melon will grow onto whatever block is available. So if you were to plant this, you know, out here in the open, it could grow onto uh, all four sides and it'll be random. Now I don't want that here, I kind of want them to be in a line and I, I did that with these uh, fences here, but on the end it's still growing onto this side. So what I'm going to do is take just another uh, fence and place it right there like that. So now it'll always grow onto this block here. Now that does make it uh, slower because there's a chance that it'll try to grow it onto that side and then it'll fail. Uh, but I just like the way it looks better. So I got myself a little bit of sugar cane here. I got a, a stack and an extra five. Uh, I also killed some cows and got 25 pieces of leather. Uh, I have these three pieces of paper from that uh, chest that we found earlier. And I also... went. Uh, and here's somewhere I got, so I got four books, I'm going to grab those as well. Uh, I'm going to grab some of this obsidian that we collected, and also two diamonds. And I'm going to use this stuff to make that enchanting table that I was talking about. Now I don't remember exactly how to make it, so this is a good time to point out this little book here. If you click on this, which you may have done already, you'll see that this thing opens up here with uh, all the recipes that are available. Now if you have this up here where it says show all, it's going to give you every race recipe that you can make. If you left click on it once, it'll only show you the ones you can make with the stuff available in your inventory. So if I left click on one of these here, like the leather pants for example, it's going to show me how to make the leather pants with the stuff I got. And then I just left click on this and, and uh, that's another way to craft as opposed to placing the stuff in here manually. Uh, now what I'm looking for is an enchanting table. So I'm going to search in here. There it is right there. So I'm going to left click once. And in order to make this, you take uh, four pieces of obsidian, place them in a little upside down T like that. You put a diamond on either side, and then you put a book on top. So I'm going to left click on this to make that. Uh, I also need some more books, these right here. 
So in order to make books, first I need paper, and I'm going to take my sugar cane to do that. I'm going to place them across uh, with three just like that. And that'll so one piece of, in each slot here, three pieces of sugar cane will give you three pieces of paper. So that's a one for one deal there. I'm going to shift click to make all of those into paper. Uh, looks like I'll make a few more. And then I'm going to make a book by taking the leather and then placing uh, three pieces of paper around it just like that and I think this can be anywhere so it doesn't really matter where the paper is just need three pieces of paper and a piece of leather that'll give you books and then I'm gonna take the books and make bookshelves so I'm gonna take uh, my spruce planks here place place them across the top and bottom just like that and then take my books and place them across the middle so books across the middle with planks on top and bottom it actually doesn't matter what kind of planks you make here it's always gonna give you the same bookshelf uh, so that that turns into that right there. So I'm gonna shift click, and now I got six bookshelves. And I need an area to place these. So what I'm gonna do is make my little cave here a little bit bigger, and then we'll talk about enchanting. So I made my room a little bit bigger here. I placed my enchanting table down, and I moved my bed over here. Now since I broke my bed and moved it, I had to remember to sleep in this again. Because if I were to die right now, I wouldn't respawn here because the bed got moved. I would spawn over at the uh, the world spawn where we first generated the world. So once it gets dark, i got to remember to sleep in that again. But let's talk about the enchantment table. If I right click on this, it's going to open up the, uh, the interface here. Uh, and in order to enchant, you need the tool that you want to enchant, like for example this sword. And then you need some lapis, uh, which I don't have any on me. Let me come over to my chest over here, uh, grab some lapis, and then right click on this again. So again, you place your tool on the left, your lapis right here, and you can do one of these three tiers of enchantments. Uh, the first tier is going to use one piece of lapis and one experience level. So if you see down on the bottom of the bar there, right above the axe, the number 24, that's my XP levels. And if I were to do this tier one enchantment, that would use up one level. Now these enchantments get... Uh, progressively better as they cost more so the third tier here costs three lapis and uh, three levels and for this this would be a sharpness one uh, enchantment so it would make the sword uh, do more damage uh, smite would do uh, more damage against a specific type of mob and then the knockback will cause the mob to get pushed back whenever you hit it um, so the third one's generally the best now right now this is only going to do sharpness one a level one enchantment if you want better enchantments, what you're going to have to do is place some bookshelves around your uh, enchanting table. So that's what I'm going to do with these here. And you have to place them uh, one block away. So I would place this right here, uh, right here, and then along the back here, just like that. And you see these little particles right now are going into the enchantment table. So if I go back into here and do the same thing, you see that now instead of sharpness one, I can get a sharpness two. And to enchant it, you just uh, click here, and you see uh, your tool turns kind of that purplish glow. And now I got sharpness two on my sword, so I can do the same thing with uh, this pick. I could put efficiency two on it, which is going to make it uh, mine a little bit faster. And you can do the same thing with your armor. So, for example, let's check out this chest plate. It looks like I can get uh, fire protection on that. So now, if I were to uh, get attacked by a zombie that's on fire and I catch on fire or if I step in lava I'll be protected a little bit better than I was before uh, we got a couple more levels here so let's see what else we can get uh, we can get protect projectile protection on our helmet here so that'll protect us against arrow shots um, and let's do the other ones too looks like on our boots we can get oh so I'm actually uh, what do I need I think I need more lapis uh, let me grab some more lapis here. And then try to put the boots back in there. Oh, so actually, no. I guess you need uh, at least 16 levels. Even though it would only cost 3, you need to have at least 16 to make this tier 3 enchantment. So now the only ones available are these. So I can put uh, protection on those boots. And I'll put uh, protection on these pants. And then let's see what I can get on my axe. Uh, unbreaking 1, so that'll make it... Uh, uh, have better durability uh, let's check out the shovel I can get uh, efficiency 2 on that so that'll dig faster now uh, let's see what we can get on the bow power 1 so I can get power 1 on that 
And so now all my tools here and my armor are enchanted. And that's how the uh, enchanting table works. So you can see here that now that my shovel has efficiency one on it, it's digging a little bit faster than it was before. So a cool thing you can do with these pumpkins is if you have a pair of shears, you can right click on the pumpkin to make a carved pumpkin. So I can do that with all of these here. And then you can take your carved pumpkins and make a jack-o'-lantern using a torch. So I'll open my inventory, take one of these carved pumpkins, put it in the crafting area, and then I'll put a torch right below it, and that'll make a jack-o'-lantern. And now this will actually emit light just like the torches do. So if I place this down, it's, uh, it's day right now, so you don't see any lighting changes. But if I press F3, uh, you'll see right there where it says... Uh, client light that 15 is from the sky so that's from the sunlight once the sun goes down that'll go to zero but then we have a block light that's at level 13 so this jack-o'-lantern is providing a level 15 light so then the block right next to it becomes a level 14 and what you can do with these what I like to do with them is make uh, like hidden light sources so I can come in here I can uh, dig out one of these blocks place the jack-o'-lantern down and then I'll place a trap door above it so I'll, let me make a trap door real quick actually I don't know if we've talked about trap doors yet so let's go over to our crafting area here I'm gonna make a couple more planks and then I'm gonna place them instead of making a regular door like this I'm gonna place them in this direction and make a uh, spruce trap door so now I can take my trap doors and the way these work is wherever you place them, they can either be open or closed. So you can have it like that, and then you can right click to open it. What I like to do with these trap doors is I'm gonna come in here and cover that, that uh, jack-o'-lantern, just like that. So now it looks like there's just you know a, a piece of wood on the floor, but the lighting actually goes through the, uh, the trap door. So I'll press F3 again, and you see that the block light is still at level 13 here. So the light from the jack-o'-lantern is going through the trap door, and lighting up this area so I won't get any mob spawns. So I placed a couple more of those around the uh, the cow pen and the sheep pen and you can see now that they're providing light in these areas here so there won't be any mobs in there at night. So now that we have sugar cane, pumpkins, and melons, let's talk about a couple more recipes. So I made uh, two more buckets, I got three buckets now. I'm gonna come over here and milk some of these cows because I'm gonna need some milk. So I grab some milk from those cows uh, looks like we got no more pumpkins there. Let's go over to our crafting table. Uh, let's grab these eggs as well. We're going to need those. So I'm going to come in here and grab all of these eggs. And let's open up our crafting table. So I showed you that you can take your sugar cane and place three across like this to make paper. You can also place a single sugar cane and make sugar. So I'm going to take about half a stack of these and turn those into sugar. And then you can take uh, your sugar and your pumpkins as well as an egg to make pumpkin pie. So I'm going to place one pumpkin, one sugar, and one egg. That'll give me a pumpkin pie. So I can make one more of those. Just like that. And these can be anywhere, I believe. Yeah, so it doesn't matter where you put them. You just need one of each. That'll give you pumpkin pie. And then I can also make cake. And in order to make cake... Um, I know I have all the ingredients, but I don't remember the exact recipe, so let's go through here again. Uh, where is it? Am I missing something? Cake. Oh, I'm missing wheat. So let's grab a little bit of wheat. And let me replant those seeds. Alright, now let's make ourselves a cake. So where is that again? Cake. So three wheat across the bottom, an egg in the middle, sugar on both sides, and then three buckets of milk. And these do have to be in this specific orientation. So that'll give me a cake. And now the, uh, the pumpkin pie, you can eat right out of your inventory, just like that. The cake, however, you can't eat like that. You actually have to set it down. So you have to place this somewhere. I'll place it on top of my uh, crafting table here. Now, uh, good time to point out that if you want to place something against a block that you can interact with, like for example the crafting table or the furnace, you can't just right click because that's going to open the inventory or the, uh, the interface here. What you have to do is hold shift and then you can click and that'll place it. So now I set my cake down on top of this uh, crafting table and if I can run a little bit, uh, run around a little bit until I get hungry, 
I can uh, take a bite of that cake. All right, so now I can come up to this cake, right click, and you see that I took a bite out of it and my hunger went up a little bit. One more bite and now I'm full. And so this actually cannot be picked up. You have to leave this here, come over and you can right click on it to take bites out of it. If you try to break it, it's just gonna get destroyed. So that cake is gone now. So I went back into my uh, mine shaft to collect a bunch of coal just for experience and I came across this. So this right here is a dungeon. The other uh, structure that has uh, mob spawners in it and this one happens to have a uh, spider spawner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work my way around this and light it up so that I can stop the spawning. And then I'll go in and check out uh, what's in the chests. Okay, so now that I went around the whole entire thing and placed a bunch of torches in there, it should stop the mobs from spawning. There is a couple that were already in here, so I'm just going to come in here and kill these guys. Looks like that one has a potion effect. It might have had speed or something. Alright, so I killed the spiders. Uh, put a couple more up here, just to be safe. And let's see what we get in these chests. So the first one has another golden apple, which will come in handy for sure. A bunch of string. Some gunpowder, more melon and pumpkin seeds, piece of bread, some coal, and a name tag. So we can actually use this to name mobs, and I think eventually we will use that. So I'm going to hold on to it. Uh, I'll take the coal, this other stuff I don't really care about. Uh, let's check out this one here. Oh, and this one we got an enchanted book. So uh, this is another way to put enchantments on your gear as opposed to using the enchanting table. You can get one of these books that's already enchanted and you can apply it to one of your tools. Uh, now this Curse of Vanishing isn't a very good enchantment. What that means is that uh, whatever item has this enchantment here, whenever you die, instead of the item dropping on the floor, it disappears. So actually, I don't want that there. A uh, bunch more string. Uh, we got beetroot seeds now, so I will take those. Uh, I think I'll leave this behind. And a couple uh, wheat, bones. I guess I'll take the bones. Uh, those are good for bone meal. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press F3 and I'm going to write down those coordinates, the uh, X, Y, and Z for future reference. So eventually when I want to build a XP form, I can do that here. I can clear out this area, force all of the mobs down to one point where I can easily kill them. And I think we might do that in the future. So I'm going to write down those coordinates so I can have them and uh, find this place later. Okay, I got myself a couple more levels so I can continue enchanting here. Uh, now one thing to point out is that my efficiency 2 shovel here is almost broken. Now, uh, I think I showed you guys this, that a way to repair your tools is to combine two of them just like this. That'll combine the durability of these, but it will get rid of the enchantment. So if you want to repair an enchanted tool, uh, you have to make something called an anvil. So we're going to need a bunch of iron, uh, 35 iron, but I'll, I'll grab all 41 of those. And I'm going to make three sets of iron blocks. And an iron block is nine pieces of iron ingots, just like that. That'll give me an iron block. So I need two more of those. There we go, two more. I'm going to place these three across the top. And then uh, four more ingots like this for the base. That's going to give me an anvil. So I'll grab my anvil. I will set that down here. And then if I right-click on this, it'll open up this uh, the uh, interface here where I can... Uh, rename, repair, and combine enchantments. So I can take my iron shovel, for example, here, place it there, and I can rename this to uh, something else, Grave Digger. Right? And then if I were to pick this up here, it would have been renamed. Now I can also take another shovel, place it in the second slot here, and combine the durability of these, and also keep the enchantment. Now you can also use uh, just pieces of iron here. Because it is an iron shovel, I can use pieces of iron. If it were a diamond shovel, I'd have to use more diamonds. But I can place one, and it'll repair it 25% uh, of the way. So two will be 50%, three will be 75, and then a fourth piece will be 100. Now, because it costs only one diamond or one, uh, sorry, it'll cost only one iron in this case to make a shovel. It's a lot cheaper to instead of using four ingots, use one ingot to make a brand new shovel, and then combine those two like that. Um, the other thing you do is combine enchantments. So I can come over here. I'm going to need lapis. So I'm going to grab some lapis. I can take my shovel and add an enchantment to this. So I'm going to add another efficiency 2. Uh, 
yeah, I'll click on this. So I got the efficiency two that I was showing, and it also gave me unbreaking two. So I got two enchantments on this one now, and then I had efficiency two on that one. So now what I can do is take my two shovels, combine them in here. So I'll take that one, that one, and it's going to combine these enchantments with those. So the two efficiency twos become efficiency three, and then the unbreaking th unbreaking two carries over. So now I have an efficiency three unbreaking two shovel. So it's going to dig faster than the efficiency two, and it'll have a little bit more durability. Uh, one more thing you can do is remove enchantments. And in order to do that, we're going to need some uh, regular stone here. So we can make a stone slab, just like that. And uh, let's look up this recipe, because I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, let's see here. Uh, grind. Oh, hmm. I'm missing an item. Let me look it up and see what I'm missing. Okay, I wasn't missing anything. The trade just wasn't unlocked yet. So I'm going to come back in here. And now it should show up here. Uh, there's the grindstone. So it's a plank with a stick above it on both sides. And then one stone slab. That'll make a grindstone. So I'll set this maybe uh, on top of the anvil. Just like that. And then uh, I can right click on this, open it up. And let's say I, I didn't want this unbreaking one on my... Uh, iron axe for whatever reason. I could take this, place it in here, and that's going to remove the enchantment. So if you want, ever want to get rid of an enchantment, that, that's how you do it right there with the uh, grindstone. So the last thing we're going to do in our uh, episode here is plant the beetroot seeds that we found. So I'm going to come over here. I already uh, hid some water under these slabs just like I did over there. I'm going to plant these beetroots and then I'm going to uh, jumpstart this a little bit with some bone meal. Uh, let me get rid of these torches here. So I'll just bone meal my beetroots here. Once they're fully grown, I can harvest them just like the other crops. And then I'll get both uh, some beetroot and some beetroot seeds. So now I can take my seeds and replant. Okay, I got myself a couple of beetroots here now. And let me show you what you can do with these. So you can either just straight up eat them just like this. But as you can see, they don't fill up your hunger bar very fast. Uh, you can also make a beetroot soup. So I'll open my crafting area first I'm going to need a bowl so you make a bowl out of uh, three planks like this and you place your bowl here and then uh, six beetroot across the top to make a uh, beetroot soup and now you can drink your soup and it fills up your hunger a little bit better than the beetroot does uh, one more thing I didn't show you guys is when you harvest the uh, melons there you're gonna get melon slices if you want a full melon what you do is you take these place nine like that and then that'll give you a melon and then you can set this down wherever you want that'll be it for today guys we got a lot done today we found ourselves some sugar cane and some bamboo uh, we found beetroots and we also made ourselves an enchanted table and got some uh, enchanted gear now so uh, thanks for watching and stick around for the next one